Welcome to this session. Um, I'm Shu Zhen Jiang from Taiwan. My topic today is to introduce a, a press book or an open textbook uh, that I worked with my students to produce. This book uh, can be found on this website, and uh, it's an interactive um, textbook designed for elementary and uh, uh, school children, basically school children aged from 10 to 16. And it's adapted from a novel by a very famous writer in Taiwan. Okay, this is the, the first page of, of the uh, open textbook. The overview of my report today is to tell you about my motivation of producing this ebook. As I teach in a, a university, with a mission uh, to revitalize Hakka consciousness in Taiwan. Hakka is an ethnic group, and I'll explain more about um, its status in Taiwan. And also, I participated in a USR project focusing on the service to school children, basically from underprivileged families. The way I produce the, the e-book uh, has three stages from preparation, then planning, and then go to writing. In the preparation stage, I had to decide which writer um, to, to teach. This writer tells stories about Hakka people in Taiwan. And also, I explored some platforms, and finally, I chose Pressbooks as the platform. Then, I designed the textbook outline based on a student's picture book, also adapted from this long novel. And then finally, um, in the process of writing, I, uh, I did the edit, editing. Uh, I edited the glossary illustration and also the test bank, uh, the test questions. Um, I'm affiliated with um, the College of Hakka Studies in uh, NYCU, that is National Yangming Jiao Tong University, located in Xinzhu. This university, sorry, this university is famous for um, making a product um, for the science park next door. And the most famous company in that science park is called TSMC. And the science park is considered Taiwan's golden hand, which means a hand that lay, uh, lays gold eggs. It's the economic powerhouse in Taiwan. These engineers working in science park pass their leisure time in the, uh, has their city life in Xinzhu city. Also, in the rural areas in Xinzhu County. Xinzhu City and Xinzhu County are two different administrative units. And Hakka people live in Xinzhu County. So Xinzhu, uh, generally speaking, is called the Hakka Heartland. Hakka people made up just one-seventh of Taiwan's population, but constitute the majority in a broad belt of hilly country, 
which reaches from near Taiwan's main inter international airport at Taoyuan through the counties of Xinzhu and Miaoli, almost as far as Taichung. In this region's small towns and villages, the Hakka language remains in daily use among the elders aged above 60, which means that this language is dying. Hakka literally means guest people with a negative connotation of strangers. So they are called strangers wherever they move. So similar to Metis, uh, uh, Meti in Canada, in terms of intermarriage between different ethnic groups, Hakka people live uh, in hills and mountains. So they have very close encounters with uh, Taiwan's indigenous people. However, they are also called invisible in terms of their small population. Therefore, they always feel unsafe and inferior. Uh, this is a map about the geology of Taiwan. Two thirds of the land are uh, hills and high mountains. So Hakka people are particularly good at living in the hills and high mountains. So um, this population basically is between the dominant group, which lives on the plains, the green part, and uh, indigenous people who live in high mountains. So where were or where are Hakkas in Taiwan? Um, we can see from an old map and a new map that they, uh, the red part uh, are uh, where they, uh, most of them live. Are they indigenous people? Some claim they are. Uh, however, uh, from today's point of view, Hakkas move everywhere in Taiwan. So the greener the color shows means the density of this ethnic group. These terms like native, indigenous, or son of the land uh, has very complicated meanings in Taiwan. From the perspective of indig indigenous people, Taiwan has experienced layers of colonization under the governance of Spain, Holland, Japan, and China during the past 400 years. Only until 30s, 30 years ago, in the process of a democratic democratization, sorry, my mind is not English now because I'm suffering jet lag. Um, did the issue of nativization emerge for the reorientation of national identity? In 1994 and in 1997, the Constitution revised several articles about the name rectification of the Aboriginals. Since then, the cultural policy has been changed from Chinese to multicultural, or from, political, uh, from politicians' point of view, from Chinese to Taiwanese. So indigenous means, from a New Zealand scholar's research, uh, the Maori people in New Zealand have the genetic link with people, uh, with the indigenous people in Taiwan. So, um, so this, this, uh, so New Zealand is actually the end point of a long chain of island hopping voyages in the South Pacific. Uh, and this has, um, this has gone uh, over, uh, over 1,000 years. Start, but but the, their starting point is uh, Taiwan. So this research is done by Jeffrey Chambers. And he had spent over 
15 years on this research. In this sense, Hakka are not indigenous people because they moved from uh, mainland China uh, to Taiwan. However, Hakka has been a minority group uh, either in um, China or in uh, Taiwan, but they feel more inferior uh, in Taiwan. Uh, as the American Chambers Taiwan uh, um, describes Hakka, it says, outwardly, the Hakka people are indistinguishable from other Han people. Han means uh, the dominant group in China. Yet, Hakka culture differs significantly from that of the dominant Holo population. Holo is the dominant a dominant population in Taiwan. Uh, but Holo and Hakka, uh, from academic point of view, are considered both Han. Okay. Um, however, we find Hakka people have, uh, uh, they have powerful political figures, although their population is uh, much smaller. Uh, people like um, uh, the former Singapore Prime Minister Li Guangyu, uh, Li Guangyao, and um, uh, and many uh, famous, let's say, Chinese Communist generals are from are, are Hakka people, and um, they are in their culture, women uh, don't have. Uh, don't bind their feet, so they don't have the feet binding um, custom. They also they are also famous for studying and farming, so they emphasize the way they deal with um, the heaven and the earth. When they farm, they look down at the, at the land. When they study, they look up at the sky. Um, I show you some uh, the two pictures about their food and also uh, the women's costume. Uh, because of their minority status, uh, um, the government of Taiwan set up uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 2001 set up a special council called Hakka Affairs Council, and usually we we thought only indigenous people have this kind of um, special, uh, special treatment. However, Hakka uh, earned one. We also have a council of indigenous peoples. Okay? There are uh, 16 um, tribes all together in Taiwan. Now, Hakka are not indigenous, but feel underprivileged, like the indigenous. So, um, they have suffered the so-called invisible status. And from 1949, when Taiwan entered its martial law period, the national government, um, which is the KMT regime, uh, moved, moved, which moved from uh, China to Taiwan, in order to unify language and for convenience of communication, promulgated the exclusive Mandarin or Chinese language policy that directly suppressed the right of non-Mandarin speaking groups to use their language. So um, there's a long description about the development and establishment of Hakka. I'll escape. Um, some part of it, ex except showing this map. Uh, so beginning from the fourth century, Hakka people have five major um, movement, moving. And so you can see they move from the north, uh, step by step, they move from the north to the south, and finally 
to uh, Taiwan and overseas China. In a nutshell, the Hakka kept moving to flee wars and disturbances, escape poverty, and pursue a better life. Staying true to the spirit of Hakka, they survived and thrived by working hard under difficult conditions. Um, so their culture is informed by the interactions with both the Han, that, that is the, the dominant group, and they, uh, Hakka is part of Han people. But they have interactions also with minorities. Hakka society exists on the margin of the mainstream Han society okay, from the perspective of racial interaction and historical social change. So in the history of racial development, the Hakka have kept close contact with minorities. In terms of racial consciousness, they claim to have pure Han blood. Let's focus on the, the racial interactions. Um, we, can, we can see that the president of Taiwan is a Metis. You know, um, uh, on her father's side, uh, she is Hakka. But from her mother's side, um, from her uh, grand great grandparent side. Uh, she's Taiwan. Taiwan is one of the 16 indigenous peoples in Taiwan. So let's have a, a, a feeling about this fusion between Hakka and indigenous people. Uh, I have three examples in terms of song, uh, food, songs, and irrigation canals. Um, I'll just play the second one. The song. Uh, could you help me? <laughs> So you see the background is the, the high mountains. Um, okay. I have only 10 minutes left, but uh, I, it seems I, that I just began um, to talk about the book. Um, the way I chose um, the writer um, and a particular novel by him, uh, actually it's the, his first novel, I chose it because it, it pleases teenagers. Uh, even though um, they, they read only the picture book or um, the e-book, uh, some of them are attract by, uh, attracted by this writer to read his original work and enjoy it. Uh, the, the writer is ethnically Hakka with indigenous blood. He grew up in Miaoli, 
uh, from a poor family. Uh, but then he became a very successful novelist. Um, his, this novel was translated into Japanese uh, uh, with um, two volumes because it's very thick. Um, this is his translator, and uh, he, she talks about the difficulty of translating this novel because it involves too many uh, languages. She also translated uh, the writer's other novels. China also published, uh, well, uh, uh, has a simplified character version of this novel. And the Nobel Prize winner, Mo Yan, um, appreciate this novel by saying such writing is astonishing. I directed um, three MA theses on this novel okay, uh, from um, a, in 2015. It's a serious academic research on the Taiwanese Aboriginal myths in this novel. But then next year, uh, another student approached me um, by saying that she prefers to uh, make a picture book from this novel. And that was my first try uh, to, to, to do this non-academic, not so academic version of this novel. Uh, so we made it a building strong Roma, that means um, the coming of age. Um, story. Uh, in 2020, uh, we made, I made it uh, an open textbook with another student. Meanwhile, okay, uh, this, uh, two minutes only, okay. Meanwhile, uh, um, in 2018, um, I, um, uh, I organized some students to join a USR project and um, make this novel a play, okay, by changing its name to um, looking for uh, a teenager looking for his name. According to, all right, uh, according to the script writers, uh, who are my students then, uh, the title means a person grows into his names uh, since uh, the hero of, this n of the story who is an Aboriginal uh, adopted by a Hakka grandfather. Uh, so we made this picture book or this adapted play, uh, a, a story about uh, growing up. The audience and their response to the play, uh, I'll just show um, the, the last point. They, are very they were very curious about the theme of the play that features love and religion uh, and power in ghosts. So who are the ghosts? Okay, so the picture book. In the novel, it means those who can mobilize, uh, who can mobilize pe people, okay. like the ancestors. Most of them are dead, and also that uh, your ancestors, including your grandparents or parents who are still alive, they are mobilizers. Um, or that. In that story, we also have resistant army against Japan, col uh, Japanese colonizers. They are real go ghosts because they, they are dead. And also we have ghosts as, um, of Japanese colonizers. However, uh, they are called ghosts when they are still alive. And um, so ghost means, symbolizes their power. There are also Americans in this novel. Uh, uh, they, are, they are also called ghosts, but they are invisible because they are only in the plains. Uh, 
uh, bombing Taiwan. Also, we have a uh, KMT regime from China. Uh, they were defeated by Chinese communists. Uh, however, uh, uh, the Chinese communists claim they are dead already, but they, they are undead in Taiwan. That has a different meaning uh, from alive. Okay? So we explore this kind of um, uh, meanings about ghosts, uh, which are also related to national identity. But it's quite dif difficult to explain the concept of national identity to school children. Okay. Um, now, uh, after, after we, uh, we produce this um, e-book, there are several reforms about uh, Hakka practices. Uh, one major w one is um, paying respect to female ancestors for gender. So by traditional Hakka practices in the past, females who were unmarried, divorced, or had passed away at an early age may not be buried in the ancestral halls, but now they can. Okay, so that, that is a, a major change uh, from the, by the Hakka. Uh, also in the e-book, uh, well, I was about to show um, the, 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 the humorous uh, interaction between the, the animal sound and also the name of the, the birds. But uh, sorry that we, don't, we really don't have time. Maybe just show one. Okay. These birds um, are from the novels. Uh, okay, so personally, I'm not Hakka, but I learned from my teaching uh, about Hakka cultures, uh, uh, Hakka people and culture and also uh, their literary imagination. So being a guest, you always respect your host and uh, remain resilient. But with the virtual concept of pure Han, Hakka people, um, ra Hakka's r racial identity is pure Han. So you look up to the sky and not at the land. So the land problem is will, will not be your major concern, like the indigenous people. And you always blend in new virtues, such as taking home women's wandering spirits, as I just show you, the tablet, the wooden tablet um, placed on the, on the Hakka ancestral, ancestral hall. Okay, thank you very much for, my, uh, for listening. I'm sorry for, for jumping so, so fast uh, about my slides. All right.